we're discussing whether DGENs, NFT degenerates, are flocking to fine art NFTs versus your typical collectibles. As usual, nothing in this video is financial advice. We are not financial advisors. The NFT space is incredibly risky, so always do your own research. And as always, if you enjoy the content, hit the like button, smash the subs uh, subscribe button, really helps us out. Gentlemen, we got Ben Jammin, Depeche Node, really excited to dive into this concept. How you guys doing? Excellent. Just just great. I like how like we're stair stepping. It's like Pio's the tallest, then Ben Jammin's <laughs> tier two, then I'm tier three. So this is how I've lived my life as a, as a third tier. There you go, dude. Now coming down to my level. This is what I like to see. Ruin my posture. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing when I first came in. I was like, wow, there's like stairs here. It's perfect. Uh, yeah, I, I know my place on the totem pole. This is very, very clear. Let's go. <laughs> the notem pole. That's oh, right. Oh, the notem pole. Ben with the zinger as usual. Um, well, look, right before we went live, you know, we were joking because uh, Node has some really great fine art NFTs like a uh, ringer, which I have pulled up right here by Dimitri Cherniak's the artist of this, right, Node? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Ben was making a joke. I mean, it was like a half joke, right? Where he said uh, he considers Bored Apes fine art. Uh, ben, do you want to expand on that at all? Yeah, well, when, when I think of, you know, generational art that is going to last the test of time, that anywhere from your, your grandparents to your the grandchildren will love and appreciate, that's what I think fine art is. And so obviously that's why I'm a Bored Ape holder. <laughs> Well, well, look, they're really, I know you're like half joking, but there's absolutely, in my opinion, some truth to what you're talking about, which is basically like, at some point, the cultural relevance of some of this stuff, it becomes iconic. And it's kind of the same thesis as a crypto punk, right? When crypto punks first came out, I don't think that the fine art market was p coming out of the woodwork in 2018 saying, holy shit, these free to claim crypto assets on the Ethereum blockchain are the next big thing. But because of their historical and cultural significance within crypto, you get to the point that they're auctioned off by the major art auction houses. Their fetching price is similar to Jackson Pollock's and some of these other huge, you know, traditional fine artists that are iconic. And I think a lot of people believe that over time, the same thing will happen with Bored Apes, especially when you see them building out this, this like technological advancement, this metaverse thing, the other side. Um, I, my personal thought is like, the board apes and the mutants and even the dogs, they become just like goaded as these grail collectible assets. And that's that's kind of like fine art. Like I was at MoMA one time and they had like 90s windbreakers. It was like a fashion exhibit. They had like 90s, you know, starter windbreakers and, and Nike fanny packs and stuff on display. Like this stuff can kind of happen over time. Yeah, that's what I love about, you know, like fine art and, and just art in general, right? Like uh, almost everything that becomes like iconic is at first totally hated, right? So I love showing my ringer to people and they're just like, what the crap is this? Like, I can't believe you. Like I spent I spent uh, four ETH on mine. And, uh, you know, I told, I remember telling my dad and he was like pissed. He was like, what, <laughs> why are you throwing your money away? You have like a wife and three kids, you know, like, and I'm like, dude, without the context, you know, like <laughs> if you don't have any context, kids. it's like, it's like, <laughs> what, what is this? You know? And, uh, and the same thing went, you know, same thing goes for crypto punks. When they first came out, nobody cared. And, you know, and then what, for people like me, when I, when I was, uh, since I bought a punk early on, I was like, look these apes are just total garbage. You know what I mean? I was like, this is, this is lower class stuff. You know what I mean? And then, you know, eventually they obviously, uh, they obviously did their thing. So I love how everything kind of disrupts something before and, and, and totally just destroys people. Yeah. I wanted to pull up your actual ringer node. What is your open C? What, what's the uh, account node called? vault node vault. Can we just take a second to appreciate that node goes around telling people to look at his ringer? Look at my <laughs> ringer. <laughs> check out my There's ringer a, over here. Just check out my ringer. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there she is. Just a simple, a simple floor ringer at the moment. And that, yeah, I guess I got an offer on it, but. 
An offer for forty four k. Guys, I, I guess I got a Honda Civic being offered to me for this. No way, not gonna, dude. I've been diamond handing. This is my longest held uh, asset, actually. I've had it since I think end of February last year. So February twenty second, man, at oh, four point twenty five ETH at that time. ETH was probably between three and four k at that time, right? Something like that. No, 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 no. It was it was much lower. Uh, oh really okay yeah dude dude eth went on when? this insane tear from like right around then up and up through like april i think right yeah that's may or so yeah or, yeah uh, yeah right right after the apes it was probably the ape run that did it but uh no so <laughs> no with with that offer being 35 or so you probably could get you know 40 eth um pretty easily from that i would say but would you trade that ringer for a few other nfts that could um add up to the equivalent of floor price of that or is that just like a never sell for you uh yeah i think it's i mean it's everything everything has its price you know what i mean if you're an nft guy and you and you, you say that it doesn't have a price i don't know i don't know but uh i <laughs> i i plan on holding this like for a long time like i i don't think i can't think of the problem is uh i'm not comfortable enough with other with anything else to put my confidence in it and say, I'd rather have that than my ringer. Um, even crypto punks. It, yeah. Crypto punk. Yeah. I may do it, but I have one of those. So I'm like, I'll just hold one of each and hopefully, you know, my, my same thesis of all value accruing to the top. And you look at, there's only a few gen art collections that are that, that have that high price point now. And they tend to kind of stay there. Right. So I, I don't know. This is kind of the, the beauty of ringers for, for, for the uninitiated, for those that do not understand, like the one thing that I love about ringers is that they kind of help you to understand what gen art is, like by talking about, hey, it's just this algorithm, right? And it's a series of pegs and you can wrap a string around pegs in an infinite number of ways. And so the art in and of itself is like teaching you about this whole movement. And that's what I love it. And it's so simple and pure. It's just, yeah, for those with taste, you know what I mean? We, we love it. <laughs> Do you, you got to get a big ass print of this thing in your house. I mean, if you have one of these art pieces, especially if you're not underwater on it, it's like if you bought the top, it's kind of weird to, to put it on the wall. But like since you're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're in the green and you're in the black, um, you got to have a big ass dope framed print of it. You mentioned two others. Are you talking about Fidenza and what else? We call them the, the Fidenza. You know what I mean? You can't just say Fidenza. It's like a Fidenza. That makes it more valuable. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. Why, why do you think they're the top ranked? It's like the Fidenza. Like, of course, you put out the name. I love how if I just it's say it. It's by a guy Pio's named like, Tyler Hobbs. Pio, Pio Vincenzo is, does not like it when I say Fidenza. You know? Tyler Hobbs, yo. Tyler Hobbs. Uh, he likes it. He, dude, he understands how to market this stuff. That guy is smart AF. Have you? Did you see him at VCon? Yeah, so him smart. and Snowfro. That was the best. Yeah. A lot of people have said that's like the best. So, okay, Fidenza. And then I mean, when the I think other? of fine art, I think of like the Italian Renaissance. So, like, it, it, it always going to have a little bit more value if it's named after something that, you know, kind of fits that profile. A, th a thousand percent. I mean, you guys, you, you, you captured his genius right there. Um, is there another one, though, no, besides Fidenza? Uh, I feel like when it comes to the, the gen art like collections, those two stand on their own. Like, there's nothing that holds that high of a price point. Um, what about autoglyphs? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've to, dude. Okay, yeah. Those, those are those are, those are so high that I don't even like think about like them. Three fifty or something like that. Yeah, right? it's so. I actually like own. High? There's one on fractional art. My buddy uh, bought one and fractionalized it, and I I own like one percent of an autoglyph, uh, and uh, autoglyph really is the OG. It's like the first on chain generative, and it's it's epic, right? This, these are the same guys that did uh, CryptoPunk. So. Uh, Pio, you got to zoom out, bro. Dude, you're like, I'm like trying to find like, where are we headed here. He's we're showing we're us entering. like a letter of each page. We're going to go through the pixels into the matrix, right? And then come back out. There we go. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, autoglyphs are pretty dope. Um, I, I would take a ringer from an art perspective, but clearly the market is identifying their, the historical significance of autoglyphs, uh, you know, to be... Uh, really, really valuable since they're priced at a premium. And then I just checked. They're I, selling I, too. That's what I was going to say is like the liquidity is actually there. I know it's zoomed in a lot, but if you go to activity, there, you go. there we go. 
Thank you. Three days ago, um, one sold for 248 ETH. So I think that 300 ETH floor is a little bit unrealistic. It was at 350 like yesterday. So the the supply crunch and there's there's got to be a lack of volume, obviously, at those prices. And you, you see most of them is like one or two per month. So it's not a lot of sales that come. But like this is... This is one of the projects that I've heard about since I first entered in. You know, when, when you talk about non PFP projects, like this has always been one of the the most notable in in collections and and mostly in my opinion because of you know who made it. Like I, I think when you know you, you look at this stuff, like who made it is just as important as what it is. And you know, if if people if people didn't know what art blocks were or what larva labs were like, would, would these have the same kind of value? And I would, I would be willing to bet no, because the, the narrative around them has been pretty well established by this point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's also okay. like, I, I would, I would say too, like the, just the idea that these are, these are pioneering like on chain generative art though, like that, the, the the collections that are viewed there, and this is definitely probably, you know, I would say the one, if not one of the select few that is considered like that pioneering, hey, we we, we put all of it on chain and it was generated on chain and it's stored on chain. You know what I mean? Like lots of chains there. But uh, dude, I do think I do think that that's like probably the main reason. Yeah. And, and yeah. Ben, you mentioned like, since you got in, did you ever target any sort of like, you know, Damien Hurst or like any of these fine art things, like any of the art blocks or were you more like, you know, board apes, gutter cats, pure, I, I know you were pure play collectibles, but did the, the fine art stuff ever make it into your wallet? You know, the, like, like you said, I was kind of like half joking about the board ape stuff, but I mean, you know, I don't come from any kind of collector or, or art background. Like in, in fact, I, I always kind of stayed avoided it, I guess, just because like, you know, I've never been a man of culture. And so when, <laughs> when like, <laughs> what a quote, <laughs> when, I'm going to throw that on Twitter, dude. I love oh, that. dude, it's, it's so bad. Like I, I talk with my buddy Robbie about it all the time. Like I have to ask him to explain things for me. Like, you know, who's that rapper? What's that clothing line? Like, I'm just not good with that kind of stuff. And so when it comes to, you know, collectibles and art, like I, I didn't come into this, like, let me find the art that speaks to me most. I was looking for, you know, utility for the most part. And, you know, I was looking for what can I do with this stuff and what's fun and, and what, you know, what's cool. And I just didn't really see, you know, the, the auto generative stuff as cool necessarily, even though like I'm a, big proponent of the tech to me, it was just like, Oh, you know, ringers and dots and lines. Like I remember like, you know, doing things like that with um, what is it like thread and wrapping it around pins and stuff when, you know, when you were younger, like playing those little games. And to me, it was just like, you know, I, I don't understand this. I don't, you know, I don't really get it. Like, yeah, there's random dots that are put on there, but for the most part, like when I, when I first got in there, you know, I was looking for things to do, not necessarily things to look at. And so that's why, like, I never gave a shit about when people were like, yeah, bored apes are not fine art. And that's not, you know, <laughs> that's not valuable because I'm like, I don't give a shit. Like, what, what do I care for the most part? Like, I, I'm not a collector of art. Like, as I've, as I've, you know, started to understand more about art history and the differences between them, I started to appreciate it more. But no, I, I never really came into it trying to think like, let me uh, aspire to get a Fidenza or a ring or something like that. Although now I can appreciate it a lot more than uh, when I was first joining the industry. I mean, it, it's a different thing, like you said, right? So it's like having one of these things is basically the same thing as like a rich guy wearing a suit, you know, inviting people to his mansion for a dinner party. And there's like the big, the big painting on the wall. And it's like, look at how rich I am. Right. Whereas, uh, what we're talking about, like board apes, gutter cats, that's almost like the kid on the playground. That's like, yo, I got the dopest Pokemon cards. You know what I mean? Like that type of thing. And there's different camps. Right. And I definitely did not understand the art block side of it. I just, uh, 
at first, right? Like I, t I get it a bit more now. I also want to point out like, you know, you brought up your ringer node. Look at this like piece by Mondrian, which you would see in the major museums in the world. I think you probably could see this even in like the Louvre and shit like that. Is it really that much different than the Cherniak? You know what I mean? The only difference is a machine didn't make it, a guy did, you know? Yeah, yeah, and the simplicity is there, right? And for me, like my entry into the space was through the gen art stuff, right? So I was following DC Investor from the beginning, and it's kind of like it, for me, it, I'm, I'm, I recognize I'm probably unique, right? But like an analogy I always use is like I didn't care about cars at all until Tesla came out, right? And then I was like, okay, I need to get a Tesla, and uh, I should have got one, and then I am uh, did not take profits, and now I'm poor. <laughs> but the but like I for me is like I always liked art. I appreciated art. You know, I was like an aspire. Maybe I was like inwardly like I was an aspiring collector. I knew like my dad, my dad like has invested. He doesn't invest. He just like buys art that he loves. And it's always been his best performing asset. Really He's made so many terrible investment decisions and art. He has always done extremely well because he has. He has good taste and like he he likes good art. Um, and so that kind of inspired me when I got into this and I saw the generative art stuff. I was like, hey, like this actually feels like it speaks to me because I love NFTs. I love the tech and I want to own this art. And so it's interesting just like the different paths that we take. But I do. I feel like I wasn't an art collector before and I am now. So, you know, say that for what you will. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically an art snob. At this point. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm an aspiring art snob. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I look, look down look on these apes. I look down on all these apes that are that have no culture, but they're all richer than me. You know, it's like I'm like, come on. <laughs> yeah, my I I never really had you know an, an affinity for you know art and museums and and stuff like that. But the the visual that you provided before, like when people are are in a house and just all standing around the same piece of art, staring at it, trying to figure out like what it means and and like, if you get it wrong, like you can't, like you can be wrong, but you, you know, there, there's so many different interpretations. And, and the way that I look at these things is just like, you know, I, I appreciate, I appreciate creativity and I appreciate hard work, but like, like Pio, the, the Mandri and I saw one, you know, uh, late last year, I got into not an argument with someone, but I basically just put up a post saying like, can someone explain the value of this to me? Because it was like specifically Mondrian. It was like it was one big block of orange, and I was just like, <laughs> "What the fuck is this?" Like, is it's like, "Oh, it's different shades of orange," and I was like, "All right, I you know let you know live and let live," but I don't get any of this shit. So like, I never pretended to, you know, if if you know if I were to get it, I would I would appreciate it, but I'm not gonna go out of my way necessarily to buy things that I don't understand. And it, like, if, if you just look at the, the different backgrounds between Node and I, like you could, you could just see, you know, like the, the, <laughs> yeah. the different art styles. Like I just got my apes up there and he's got like nice fine art, you know, painting <laughs> behind him. And my shit is just like a skateboard. And, you know, like, a, like I, <laughs> if you look, I don't, I don't even use like frames. I use thumbtacks. <laughs> I just post it in the walls. And that is everyone, high quality stuff, dude. I love it. High quality. And like, I would do the same with like a hundred thousand dollar painting. And so like, I, yes, there it is. That, yeah, this, that's so it. this is Mark Rothko, huge yes, name. Rothko? Rothko. Yeah, yeah. Like, huge name. And so Ben sees this and Ben's like, fill me in, fill me in on why this one's dope. It's like, what the fuck is this? But <laughs> But no, it's cool. Like there's story and there's history behind it. But like, I, I don't know, like as as a collector, like, do you buy that to put on your wall and show people like, or are you like proud to show these different color oranges? Or is it more <laughs> about like telling the story behind it and people thinking you're cool because you know the history? Like, like, that's what I'm trying to understand and rationalize. And and as, as much as I poke fun at it, like I, I do really want to know from the people who like are willing to put that much value behind it. Like, where does that value derive from? Well, I mean, in this particular instance, it's definitely, you know, because I, I we could look up how much Rothko's sell for. I have to think that it's 
like every Rothko is a seven figure sit. Well, actually, then again, when I was at Christie's at NFT NYC last year, you could buy a Basquiat and Basquiat's like at the kind of the top right now. He's like totally, um, you know, on trend right now for the art world. And you can buy a Basquiat for like 850K. And I was next to G Funk actually. And he like turned to us and was like, I bought a punk for more than that like a month ago. Right. Which is kind of crazy to think about at that time. Um, but yes, in this particular instance, what you said, Ben, it would be like just to say that you have the Rothko. And you guys have heard me talking on the morning show about how the only way we're going to get these like insane inflated valuations on NFTs sustainably for the long term is in the fine art category. It's not going to be in the kind of startup category like a Moonbirds or Doodles or any of these kind of like companies in the NFT space. It has to be because of the mystique of a fine art NFT. So note, I would say your punk or your ringers has a way better chance to go to the moon over I mean, I don't know, like like a doodle or something like that, because once it gets into that fine art category, the the rich ass collectors just have to have it. And it just turns into like this, you know, pardon my French dick measuring contest on who can spend the most money. And it gets to outrageous uh you know, levels. I mean, dude, you listen to the All In podcast, Chamath talks about the art that he owns. He just has a, an ass load of art literally in warehouses and God knows how much it's worth, you know? Yeah. And dude, that's funny you said that because I sold my doodle today, actually. for uh, You sold 15. a mutant ape too and I wanted to ask you Wait, about that. did it? It, it, sell, it sold? <laughs> yes, did bro. It sell? Yes, bro. You didn't even know? No, well, I had it listed. So I was listing... Dude, uh, I think I think we might be close. So I have two mutants. For the bottom? I, just, I, I well, I know I well, yeah, but I think we're uh the fact that I sold both of those today above floor. Um I, I had volume? them listed. Yeah, like I had them listed like a little bit above floor, getting those rewards on looks rare, and I was willing to sell both. Um, but the fact that they both sold actually is uh might be indicative. Maybe we're maybe we're coming out of this out of this bear, guys. Uh, People see ETH going up and get excited. And like I was, I was actually thinking about this before. As the price goes up, people start thinking. You know, they get the FOMO. Oh, I should have gotten it. Now it's going to keep going up. And then as it goes down, they say, Oh, I'll wait because it's going to keep going down. So everyone always thinks of price action in like these perpetual terms that they're just going to continue going in the direction that they are. And I've seen I've seen apes and mutants kind of pumping a little bit. I think people don't want to miss that that run in case ETH continues to go up. It'll go up a lot quicker in NFT terms because as you know, the, it, it's a compounding effect. As the floors rise while ETH is rising, you're making a lot more money than if you just held ETH. So I think there's there's some of that FOMO each way that happens. Uh I agree with you, Ben. You benefit from it on the way up. And we're like, oh my God, my NFTs are appreciating in ETH and ETH is appreciating. This is crazy. On the way down, it don't feel good. Yo, someone just said these guys have beef with beef with Poopy, always hating doodles. Poopy Cat was the first project founder that came on our channel for an interview. He's the fucking man. Doodles are dope. I, I say, I say I sell my doodle. They're like, he hates, he hates Poopy. I'm like, no, I just sold my doodle. Like I had it listed for like two or three ETH above floor, man. I, I like them. I just, you know, I think I'd rather have the ETH and uh, we'll see what happens. But dude, people mince. I'm like, up, I'm up. Uh, yeah, I bought it for one ETH. And so it's, I'm up like, you know, a 15 X. I'll take it, you know, the, the way you know that people get like defensive about NFTs that they own, like assets they own, you know, their bags is like uh, when we were talking about ENS domains two days ago or whenever people were like DMing me saying that I was like hating on ENS. I was like, what the fuck are you even talking about? That's like saying you're, you're hating on dot com domains. You bitch. Hate, it's like you hate the Internet. <laughs> um so all right one thing i do want to talk about is chromie squiggles and what you guys think about chromie squiggles my dog's on a rampage right now so i'm gonna let you guys chat for a second and i'm gonna put her in the crate but chromie squiggles are chromie squiggles you know the other asset besides crypto punks that are kind of a uh, a liquid grail asset in the nft space because there's ten thousand of them because they are 
one of the first in their category. Um, are they the real deal? Um, and will they go down as, you know, one of those NFTs that are like, you know, grail status? And I'll be right back, but I, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys say. Yeah, go for it, Ben. I want to hear your take first. All right. So like I, I look at these and I understand the signor, the historical significance, you know, that, that to me is something that had oh, a beautiful pup. Um, I, I see, I see the value in the historical stuff for sure. When, when there's real uh, history behind it, the problem I have with the NFT space is it's so new and so recent that saying something's a grail just because of the year it was minted doesn't really do it for me right like when someone's like oh this project came out a month before this other one last year it's like yeah but it's in it's in the time span of just a, a few years so what historical significance really matters over the history like with, within just this last few years yeah we're, we're looking at the time now but three years from now is that extra month or even year <clears throat> gonna matter in the long term yeah and i don't yeah i don't think so I agree. Like, I don't think I, I, it always bothers me when people are like, Hey, this one came out a day before. Right. But I will say this, like, I, I like the squiggles, uh, and, and they grow on you over time. Like I remember seeing these at 0.3 ETH, dude. Ooh. And I was oh, like, wow. I was like, look at these stupid squiggles. Why would anyone pay 0.3 for these? You know? And then like six months later, I buy one for seven ETH, you know? And, uh, and I and what I do, why I do think that it will retain some value because not not because it was so early, but because it was Snowfro, like the founder of the platform, that he and even him, like he he was like, I wanted to do something fun and playful to show people how this worked in the space, right? He was not trying to turn these into some crazy thing. And that's kind of part of the beauty is that it's like it's just some simple little squiggly line. And they're actually like kind of fun. I view them as like a signature, you know, and uh, like and so and Art Blocks itself has been, you know, the premier. And so if it doesn't maintain its status as like the premier platform for curated generative art, then you've got a problem. Right. But I do think that it's that it's in a good spot. I regret, you know, I dumped mine for the same price I bought it for several months ago. Um, the Captain and Kicks nailed move. it. Yeah, yeah, me yeah. and Captain Kicks. Uh, the, the, you buy the thing, it's going to be the best thing in the space in the future. Sell it for what you paid for. And dude, I, I held it for That's like a almost in a itself. freaking year. Like I had it for almost a year and then it runs. But I do, I am a little bit hesitant, dude, because these tend to like go through their own little mini bubbles. And so I don't know, like this is their all time high, right around their all time high. I think they hit 15 to 18 ETH earlier. And so, yeah, yeah, straight up, Micah G, I would agree with that. Like, they, they start looking even better the, the pricier they become. Um, so I don't know. I think we may, you may want to be careful if you're interested in a squiggle right now. Um, but I do, I do like them in general. I think they're great. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting because, like, even though there is historical significance to it, pe most people that I've ever talked to don't even know that they move. And so, like, the, the fact that, like, people look at it and all they see is that one marker line and, and they, it, it hits different when you see it on like a Lago frame or, or, you know, uh, something that showcases the fact that it is moving. Um, but at the end of the day, like you have to know what it is and understand it, right? Like the, the thing yeah. with profile pictures is, is it's easy to understand. And that's why I think it, it spreads to the masses a little bit easier. But when you look at this, um, you, you, someone mentioned, I think, um, uh, M123 said, like, it's a it's a marker, magic marker line, right? And like, it kind of does look like that. So yeah. you have to have it explained to you what the significance is. So it's not just let me look at this line, but let me open it and see that it moves and see that there's different kinds. And if, if you're not willing to dig into like the metadata of what makes them different from each other and how how other people value them, then it's not really going to give um, a, pers a, a perspective of value for yourself because I look at this and I'm like, okay, that's cool. And I still kind of understand it, but not fully. And to be honest, like this just isn't my style. So when, when we think of having a grail 
or something referred to as a grail in your collection, that's also something that you, you a want to say that you owned, which with this, like, it's cool. Like I, I'd be happy to own it, but you also want to show it off. And so this isn't something to me that I, you know, like I want people to come to my house and look at my ringer or my squiggle, uh, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, like, it's just not, not the perception that I have. And if like, if I came over to Node's house and he's like, yo, you want to chill today? Like, yeah, let's hang out. All right. But I got to show you this fucking squiggle. <laughs> and, and we walk over and I'm like, like, all right, cool, bro. Like, I, I appreciate that you find value in that. And, and that to me is, is why I can support it. Um, I just also think that, like you said, they go through their own little narratives. I, I think that kind of goes with what Kix was saying earlier today. There's a, a small subset of collectors who own this stuff, a smaller uh, collection uh, subsection of people who understand it. And then those are the people who typically will talk about it and mention it and bring it up. And when someone says, hey, what kind of art block should I buy? What kind of generative art should I buy? This is the name brand at this point. So that's why I think um, it goes through those cycles. People come in, hey, what should I buy? Well, if you're into fine art, you should take a look at X, Y, and Z. And squiggles, ringers, fidenza, those are all in that conversation. So I think once you have, like, like people said, the solidified as fine art and they're in the conversation, they're going to go through their own ebbs and flows. But a lot of it is based on what the current narrative is at the time. And if you say generative art is going to do well, the next question for the most part is, well, which generative art? Okay, squiggles, I'll go buy one of those. Like, you know, there, there's so many different kind of art blocks, but uh, most of them just haven't caught the, the, the flame of the narrative. And, and it should be said that art blocks hasn't, it hasn't bat a thousand. Obviously, that's a hard thing to do. Shout out to Snowfro, creator of art blocks, who invested in us in our uh, in our previous round. Shout out to Snowfro for sure. Um, you know, Pop can't beat me to it. He said ringers are different. He thinks they look good. I agree. Note, I think that you should go to MoMA and other modern art museums and see how they're framing similar art and frame the shit out of that ringer in a big way if you're going to keep holding it. I think it's a that'd be a really cool thing to do um all right before we wrap gentlemen i got one last one question for you guys so you know no one has a crystal ball and hindsight is 2020 hindsight at this point tells us that as soon as we started to go into this bear market as so on the bloody bloody days those 80 percent drawdowns that we or that that overall 80 percent drawdown the 30 percent drawdown days the days where we took major steps down we should have bought Damien Hurst. We should have bought, um, you know, uh, Chromie Squiggles. And, and those were, I mean, obviously you should have bought CryptoPunks, but those are really expensive, right? But these ones were trading at numbers that I think all three of us would have been comfortable buying, right? So that's on the way down. And we're not going to get that again. You're not going to get the opportunity to invest in fine art on the way down because we already went down. So now we're either going to go sideways or we're going to go up. As we go sideways or as we go up, now we know, okay, when we go bare, you go from collectibles to fine art because there's no need for utility. That's what's going to go up is people are going to go flight to quality for art. What do we do on the way up? Is it just the opposite? What's the move on the way up? Is it mutant apes? Did no just sell the mutant ape when he should have bought one? What's the story here? Yeah, it probably did. You know, <laughs> go figure. I don't know, like uh, we're, we're seeing um, we, we've seen a bigger run, right? As a, a, in recently with some of these other like uh, type in PO type in uh, memories of uh, Chilin or Keelan. It's Q-I-L-I-N. Like those are ne near like an all time high and they're freaking gorgeous. This is what I love about Gen Art is like you just you, you get to you get to like what you like, right? If Ben hates it, that's cool. But I love this piece, right? And I'm like, okay, so I bought one because I just was like, this is legit. I could totally frame this. And I, by the way, I did frame my, uh, I framed the dead ringers in my house. Those are awesome. They're, they're, they're I, totally I'm going to frame that too. It's, yeah. I, it's so good, man. It's so yeah, good. Yeah, it's, it's great. And so I don't know, like on the way up, like if you're looking to be a momentum trader, then yeah, be careful. I have no, I have no idea. But that's why I kind of like the art for the long term. If I'm like, okay, if I got to hold this for a year, uh, I, I'm much more comfortable in that uh, than than owning almost any PFP, to be honest. Like, 
there's we're still nobody everybody thinks that like we're kind of set but like dude like every single project is making it up as they go and that's totally fair i love it it's it's all a grand experiment and like the apes are we have no reason to doubt yuga they've just continue to dominate but like uh you still have that execution risk with any any project any brand whereas the art you're just like well if i like it uh then i'm okay having it right Okay, Ben, any thoughts, like any trend that, I mean, look, 50 mutant sales in the past 24 hours. We got some insider trading yeah, going on. Must be. And I'm, I'm on, <laughs> I'm on the outside. Just, uh, let's make that clear. Make that known. The I'm insiders an just shoved you outside. You were um, inside. They dragged you out the door. Funny enough. I was actually telling my wife earlier this morning, I was thinking about sweeping some mutants. Oh, uh, I was thinking about buying some just, just because, um, I, I sold an ape about a month ago, maybe or so. And I've, I've been thinking about buying back in because I, I kind of regretted the sale just in general. And I did it at a time when I was buying a house and that kind of fell through. Yeah. So I was thinking, I was like, you know, may, maybe I should buy back in and get another ape or buy like four or five mutants instead, since they're kind of like a five to one ratio typically. And they've gotten you know, a good amount of value. And there's some some more roadmap items coming up. And I think, you know, that typically is where people would go um, to sweep. But just je- owned by Franklin. That's funny. Oh, this, uh, oh this wow. he's trying to dump it. That's hilarious. Uh, did, um, you, did you real quick, Ben, did you sell yours at a higher price in USD terms than this? No, no, I sold it near the bottom. Um, it, it was around this. The, it, it was it was maybe like seven or eight K lower. So it, it wasn't yeah. a big, a big loss or anything like that. Um, but that was at a time when I, I wanted to get a little bit more liquid on the side and things were pretty much crashing. So I wanted to make sure I got some liquidity before that, but I'm thinking of buying back in again, especially with the floor being a, a little thin, but um, j- just to, to go to the, the other point about the art real quick to, to finish up. Yeah. You know, as, as much as I, I, you know, poke and prod and, and joke around a little bit about like fine art and, and stuff like that, like at the end of the day, like I do appreciate good looking art and, you know, I do buy things that I think look good. And and one of the things that is is important to me that I that is really just kind of different in in this industry than in, you know, buying art in the past, like like a node's dad or something would is that. You know, I have the opportunity to to not just speak with these artists, but grow relationships with them and watch them grow and be a part of, yeah. um, you know, someone's journey as opposed to buying something after someone might have died. And, you know, like the, the way that I look at it is, um, you know, I, I'm never going to be well, I can't say never. I'm, I'm not typically the guy who's going to spend a lot of money on pieces of art to hang or view, but. I will buy pieces of art that I like and look good to support artists and people that I see that are grinding or people that are making their mark. And, you know, as much art as you'll see, like you put two things next to each other that you, you appreciate, you know, the quality of them equally. The separator for me is the fact that I can see these people grinding and working and they're, they're growing alongside myself and so to have that in my collection is is what i value and there, there's so much art out there that you can buy that people like for the taste but there's you know there's always going to be some kind of narrative behind it that either gives the value to other people that you're willing to resell or just um allow me to internalize why i bought this piece and so you know if you look through my collections i do have a, a decent amount of art that i bought they're just not typically like the the big names that you would know. It, it's more about people who I see always grinding on on Twitter or in Discord, and I buy to support them. And I know that they've put just as much time in to create their pieces as you know someone who would have done it a long time ago with a different narrative. And you know, I'm just more of I guess a modernist than you know um, his, uh, providing historical value. 
Yeah, and NFTs give you the opportunity to to have a relationship with a lot of these creators. Sometimes that relationship gets in the way of taking profits and stuff like that. So that's right. something to think about too. But with the art stuff, usually the goal is to uh, you know wait a long time. Well, that's our show, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure that you follow Ben and Node. Their Twitter handles are at the bottom of the screen right there at Depeche Node underscore at X Benjamin X. You can hear them frequently on the morning show that we do Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. We always appreciate their perspective. Make sure that you hit the like button and smash the subscribe button. Thank you so much for joining us. Catch you guys next time.